AD's like, AD's, be honest, I haven't seen game without AD. Like, oh my God, the Lakers are terrible defense. Terrible. The, uh, like, AD is the defense for the team. Defense. Like, he, right. he is the defense for the team. LeBron don't play defense like that. I mean, it's probably he can play defense, but he's he's lazy. You see, him, he's just standing there, right. hands up, he's not moving. Okay, bro. So tell the people how long you've been a Laker fan, a real Laker fan. Yeah, I'm. I've been like since Kobe. Like Kobe would be playing like since like I've been a Laker fan since. Kobe won three straight finals without Shaq. Okay, okay, okay. So. What you think about, you know what I'm saying, the Lakers situation, like Darvin Ham and, you know what I'm saying, the, the team and everything. You know, like, what do you think the team need to do to, you know what I'm saying, get, at least get back to where y'all were last year, you know what I'm saying, Western Conference Finals? Because, you know, I'm a Warrior fan, you know what I'm saying. I'm just going to I I'm just gonna go off about my team. But I, I do want to know because I think the Lakers have, like, a, a, a good squad, but I think they overvalued, you know what I'm saying, the, the players that they actually signed. So, so what do you yeah. think from as from like a Laker fan that actually you know what I'm saying being rooting for the Lakers, you know what I'm saying? What what do you think? Uh, it's not Darvin Ham's fault. I mean, don't get me wrong; he can be part of the problem. He is, but he's not mainly his fault. You know, what I think is that um, Austin Reeves, I believe he's kind of overrated. Not gonna lie, I don't think with they Reeves out of like an All Star. I think he's just a good six man type of player. You know, right. Like, D'Lo, he's inconsistent, we know that. Like, he, this time he averaged, like, 18 points. But this time he averaged, like, 11 points, like, bad shooting night. Like, I think what I want for the Lakers is, is a rebuild. Take LeBron to a bad team that they're not even winning. Like, the Wizards, they're not going anywhere. <laughs> AD, like, AD, he still has, he can still do something in his spine. AD's still bit in the spine. So, you can set him to, like, a team that need more defense. I believe, like, the Bucks. Nah, that'd be a super team. That's, like, that's definitely Bucks? a super team right there. Yeah, Dane, AD, and Giannis. Be a super team. They wouldn't even know what to do. And like, then you would probably have Brooke Lopez coming off the bench. Yeah, man. Brooke Lopez actually did play with the Lakers and LeBron. And most people forget about that. Oh, oh good LeBron, good LeBron, Giannis team. With Brooke Lopez, LeBron did play with Brooke Lopez with Brandon Ingram and Kuzma. That's a good team, good young squad actually. I just don't understand just, how a team with two twenty-five point per game score, LeBron James shooting the best season shot from three in a long time, and that is Miami actually. You know what I'm saying? The problem, my two pro- my two problems is. You got Jared Vanderbilt and Cam Reddish looking like the same dude, giving you four points in like thirty minutes. Cam Reddish has to be playing worse in this season than he was before. Yeah, and they not locking, ain't locking up nobody for real. What they were supposed to do, Man. all I heard was, "Oh, Vando coming back, Vando coming back," and I want the Lakers to do good because just because of the spirit of Kobe, just because of that, I don't like Jenny Buss because of what she did and signing Steve Nash yeah. and signing them boys. You know, that, and, was, you know, that pissed me off. Yeah, and doing all that. That's why I don't really fuck with them. Like, But I but, really do want the Lakers to do good because I like Anthony Davis, you know what I'm saying? But yeah. the inconsistency, you know what I'm saying, in the past, you know what I'm saying, has kept me like, bro, what the hell is going on? But it's not like now, like both of them, is, they playing what they doing, they doing what they do. AD more so on both ends of the or the. Uh, the floor. You got LeBron, you know, he have his chase down blocks and everything, but he ain't like, he ain't, he, he 38, 39. I kind of give him a, maybe a smidget of a pass, but when people get to saying, oh, well, he doing this and he doing that at 39, okay, you can't have it that way. And then when somebody criticizing him on defense or whatever, he's 39. Like, okay, which one is it? I'm trying to give him a pass because he's 39 and everything, but I can't sit here and be like, oh, man. Like, I'm talking about standing in the paint and somebody coming in and you just bro. watching them go up. Like, whoa, what, what are we doing? What are we doing, bro? And LeBron, LeBron, he wasn't – I'm not going to sound like a hater, but he's not a great rebounder. He's just – he's not hustling those rebounds. He's just standing there in the bottom, like, like 10 seconds, 10 to 6 seconds in the paint. Like, you should have got, five, like, 3-second rule. It's just like, – Like, I be, it don't like make he's just waiting for those rebounds. He don't hustle those rebounds like that. I just not – he used to be like a Miami yeah. or the early cab of the years. Like yeah. the type of he left Miami, 
he started staying the paint. By the time he left Miami, he started bringing the paint for the rebound. Right. Not playing deep in. And then my thing is, then you got Austin Reeves or whatever like that, you know what I'm saying, who has been just kind of getting up there a little bit, you know what I'm saying, playing better or whatever. But him being – him coming in and starting slow – kind of hindered them and then and the biggest thing bro i'm sorry i know you Laker fan but i'm sorry there when they come out in that first quarter it's like they don't even want to be there that's one of the biggest l's for the lakers right now is that they're a terrible first quarter team like they will not for some reason they always come out really lethargic in the first quarter and have to make a comeback and you can't win no championship or be a winning no, team like I, that i noticed that Oh, you came back, but you still lost at the end. You know, and it's like it always happened. Like, you know what I'm saying? Or like the the Timberwolves game, which I'm not finna sit here and say, oh, if it is a three, what is it? It don't matter if it was a three if it wasn't. They were leading that game. So it really Uh, doesn't even matter. They was beating the Timberwolves. They were leading that game. They basically let them come back and, and, you know what I'm saying, take the game from them. Right. Thank you. And Latanjong came back out again, complaining about uh, the ref again about it's a three, the three. Was that Kobe? Kobe just would have let it accept the law. He yeah. would have just accept the law. It's a good game, accept the law. He would not be smiling. Now, ain't nothing, ain't, and that's that's another thing that pisses me off. At the end of the games, when y'all lose, and this nigga over there smiling, laughing, and jumping like that, I'm like, I know Laker yeah, fans. Like I know Laker fans. Like, bro, what the fuck is going on? This ain't got nothing to do with no LeBron fans, nothing like that. I'm talking about real Laker fans over there. Like, bro, what the fuck is going on? Ain't shit funny. No, it's not. It's not even just LeBron. It's the whole Laker squad. Yeah. Yes. 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 It really is. I seen D Lo one time, just like <laughs> you, you get like, what the fuck is funny, bro? Ain't nothing funny. You niggas just lost. Yeah, we're not even. You're probably like a playing team right now, if I'm not mistaken, like ninth seed. I think the tenth seed now after that last loss, they won above yeah. my Warriors. Who's who? I'ma just listen, bro. Also, I'm, before I say something, and here, here's the fact: but did more for LeBron than Kobe ever did in his late career. Man, talk about it. You see, Gene Buzz gave him like an old Steve Nash, last leg, and Dwight Howard. He just came off an injury. They came off a back injury for Orlando. He's not the same, Matt, uh, um, Dwight Howard. After that, what they did, Jordan Clarkson, they had some young guys. Like, this could have been off. And here's the thing you know something? Jordan Clarkson played better with Kobe than LeBron did with the Cavs, if you look at the numbers. Right, right, right. And Julius Randle, he never really played with LeBron, so I can't. Really, but he did play better later on than like in New Orleans and the Knicks. You know, he he can be a choker in the playoff, though he is. Yeah, but my thing is this. But yeah, go ahead. Look at all the look at all of the trade Jimmy Butler did for LeBron more than Kobe, AD, Russell Westbrook, uh, come on Anthony, Dwight Howard again, and you get um, Ray John Rondo. <laughs> Ray John Rondo, KCP, a solid three and D player. Andre Drummond, and Drummond, Kyle, well, Kyle Kuzma, Kuzma was there in the league of the Never mind. And Brook Lopez later on that one year. What else? I'm tired. It's just like it's rinse and repeat. It's just like okay, we get these pieces in the off season, and then we get this new coach. All right. I was looking at worst all of that for Kobe in later career. <laughs> they, they didn't give a fuck. They gave it. Okay, we're going to get you. All right, we're going to get you Metal World Peace. We're going to get you, you know what I'm saying, maybe Trevor Reza here. You know what I'm saying? We're going to develop Andrew Bynum. We're going to get you Pau Gasol, you know what I'm saying, who is a really, really good player. That's going to be your you know, next piece. You know what I'm saying? And Bynum you, you just roll with it. Hell. Yep. He might be more injury prone than AD. He might be. Injury prone as hell, everybody, and I ain't, and that ain't even to say he was a bad player because Bright Bynum used to be no, he, killing, but he couldn't never stay on the floor. But and here's the thing: people said, "Oh, Bynum was a top two center, not in a two hundred ten." Boy, please, boy, please. That nigga went. He up. was not an all star until twenty twelve. That's later. That those nigga two was not no top two center. He was really good, but he wasn't no. Come on, bro, y'all. That's to show you how how much people 
hate this man even more now that he's gone. Yeah. Like, they also, Bynum in the final was terrible if you look at it. Listen, terrible. I watched those finals and like, bro, that's him and Powell, that first final in 2008 when Powell got bullied by KG and they had one of the worst finals losses I've ever seen and I never seen, I never thought they was going to get done like that. And what happened? That off season, they go to the Olympics and everybody know what happens with the redeem team. He runs into his chest. He put the uh the gold medal at his uh bench. They come the next year. It's a different pile. We get to the finals. Win the next year, come back, gotta face KG again, and he was a different beast. Like if that's AD, who knows what's gonna happen? Like AD, like Kobe toughen AD up, deal with the injury, deal with all that. Who knows what's gonna happen? Man. Not a three P, maybe a four P. That's what I'm trying to say. I'm like, yo, I'm like, listen. He went to three straight with Powell. What makes you think? Okay, it, you can say injury. I was like, you can say injury. You know what I'm saying? But all that inconsistent, all that junk like that, man. He would have had a, a, a good long talking with AD, bro. During this during the season, before that even, you know, what I'm saying it, it, the first 20 games of AD having a, a six good games and then 12 bad games, Kobe gonna pull him to the side like, bro, what did you like? Hey, you either finna get it together or you finna or AD was gonna be out of there. And you know the haters say Kobe's not a great leader. You know this time that like, you know Lamar Odom, he lost one of his kids, yeah, a baby. yeah, and Kobe he didn't ignore him. He's like. You know, trying to um, soft me, trying to cheer him up, you know, Kobe. Yeah. Like, I, believe him, I believe him and Ron and Tess trying to cheer Lamar Odom up. <laughs> And they did. See, a lot of people don't. That's why you have so many of these Kobe stories that's coming out and everything. And people looking surprised. Like, oh, Kobe was like, this. yes, he was like cool with a lot of people. You know what I'm saying? That he really wanted to, wanted to be cool with. If he didn't want to fuck with you, he was not going to fuck with you. I'm like, that's just the way Kobe was. Like, Yeah, and Kobe loved all them. You know that. He loved all them. Yeah, like, you know what I'm saying? It's not... I'm like, come on! I was like, it's a reason why Shaq go to bat for Kobe whenever somebody say the go conversation and don't mention him. Like, it's a reason. It ain't just cause he played with him. They they ended on bad terms. Why would he say Kobe this or Kobe that? Remember, they ended on bad terms and everything like that. So and, same with AI. AI never even played with Kobe. Exactly. And they're not AI and Kobe. They're not really friends, but they respect each other a lot. A lot. And he say that every time he was like, yo, we both was killers. And he respected me and I respected him. He was like, and I didn't know. And he was like, and when they was telling him, like, he was obsessed with him and he was trying to figure out how to do this or how to do that. You know what I'm saying? And he was like, bro, I, I didn't know that. And then when they found out that the one day he came and picked him up and everything like that and they went out and everything. And he was like, where are you going? I'm going to the gym. He was like, well, I'm going out. And he was like... And people was like, oh, I didn't know. It's like, man, Kobe, it's a lot of sides to Kobe that only a few people really got to really see. I'm like, because... You know, you know the similar thing? Uh, Kobe and MJ. Like, you know, Dennis Rodman came to the the Bulls, right? And he was about to, he was about to be out of the league, you know? You right. know how Dennis Rodman, you know his character, you can't be a... Yeah, he was, he was tripping. Man, I, you, can, you, you can get out of control sometime, you know? He's, you know something? MJ, MJ was, him and Phil were able to hold him accountable not to go. Like, if you do if you do this, you're going to hold your ass, you know? Like, right. if you don't, you better, you, better, you better come in the gym. You better not be out for too long. That shit is crazy. So. And then it's not, man. He can't be out of control on the court, and MJ's right there to calm him down. But Men of War Peace. He's kind of like someone to Dennis Rodman. Yes. He can't be out of control. Yes. And Kobe is able to hold him accountable. Like, okay, you calm down, man. Just stay on stay on the court. Except like, for that one time Peace. where uh, when he uh, elbowed James Harden. <laughs> <laughs> that That's was probably I'm one of the, one of the only times. Because I, I, I was like, oh, my goodness. Like, oh, my God. Because I was really, I was like, man, I need Kobe to get another one. And when he did that shit, I'm like, what the hell are you doing? Come on, man. Like, After last year, Harden played deep in. Man, I ain't gonna lie though. That bring me to my that bring me to my last question. Like, okay, the Clippers. I I, I don't know about James Harden in the playoffs, but I'm talking about like right now. Okay, if you was to say, what do you think your Lakers is gonna end up? 
Cause I, I don't think my I think my Warriors are gonna be in the play in. But if, if I was asking you where you think your Lakers are gonna end up, you know what I'm saying this before the trade deadline. Cause after the trade deadline, I'll probably ask you after because ain't you know they, you know y'all getting the trade. You know y'all getting it. You know he not letting it. Uh, he not letting this yeah, ride. Every year we got a trade. Every year, by we we're, we're looking. We seen every year of the trade, by so far the past three years. Mm hmm. No Levine coming no, or I already see what's gonna happen. I already know. I've been hearing rumors that they want Dejounte Murray and Levine. I've been hearing that already. Yep, I've been hearing that for a minute. The uh, Levine and everything like that. And then last night I heard Siakam. I did hear that. Oh yeah, yeah. The looking to trade him, right? Yeah. yeah. I, I want my Warriors to get him, but I'm like, I, hey, wherever he go, he gonna he gonna be a big. I want him to go to a, like a just a good contender. I'm like, I be, I was hearing the Lakers was uh, kind of peeking at him, but for the most part, I've been hearing like Levine and um, I heard I keep hearing this Trey Young shit for some, for some reason, but I'm like. Um, Trey Young, yeah, I don't see him going anywhere. I think he's yeah, I'm like, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know about that. But then I've been hearing Dejounte Murray. I've definitely been hearing that. Yeah, I can see Dejounte Murray being a different team and being a trade. Yeah, because you got like at the same time, like you know, he he's still a two way player. I don't think he's what they thought he was. Like when they traded for him, like a, a, a top ten player, twenty player, whatever like that. He's a, a, a fringe yeah. all star, all star, and everything like that. He's gonna play both ends. But I'm like, if he was to go to the Lakers, yeah, that'd be I a great player be. for y'all. Yeah, but I think he might give up Austin Reeves because I, I just sound like a bad trade. But knowing the Lakers, they're making it possible for three years by right? looking to trade. Yeah. So I would I wouldn't be surprised if they trade something like. Austin Reed and Max Christie for DeJounte Murray because they, the past three they're making it all in the possible trade that shouldn't even be happening if it's a different team. They are, they always do something, but I think they might get rid of uh, D'Lo, if anything. Like D'Lo, yeah, D-Lo. D-Lo and maybe D-Lo Max and Christie and... Probably Cam Reddish in there. But I don't, I don't know if Atlanta will go for that, though. Uh, I'm just not... I don't know. What do you think about your words getting like DeJounte Murray? You think he'd be a good fit? See, with him, I think really any – he's not really bored. I don't want to say he's not really bored. He's playing with Trey Young, so you got to not be really bored dominant to really play with him because Trey Young is really going to have the, hand, the ball in his hand most of the time. So I think he would be a, a good fit for us, you know what I'm saying, because we got Chris Paul. Chris Paul can unlock anybody. My problem with him is his his attitude and you know what I'm saying, his willingness yeah, to bring I him Paolo go at it. Yeah, his uh his um willingness to, you know what I'm saying, be a team player and everything and all the diva stuff or whatever all like that is is uh, gotta be out of here. So I think he would be a, a good piece. To, if he's willing to get away those ego, I think he would be good for the Warriors. Yeah, like I think he would be a good player because he plays defense. You know what I'm saying? He uh he can score the ball. You know what I'm saying? And you know what I'm saying? He can score the ball, and I just think I think it would be a great, great thing for us, honestly. Yeah.